So we are reaching the final portion of our day. I've thoroughly enjoyed being here with all of you all, in case you haven't noticed. I love being here. You know, writing cover stories is fun, and hosting my own television shows is really fun. But being in front of a live audience with this much energy and this much swag has really made my day. It's been a truly special day. I cannot thank you enough. Karen Harvey, you are absolutely divine. You're just a wonderful human being. I cannot thank you enough for being here. <laughs> Maya and team Karen Harvey, thank you so much for producing this phenomenal event. I really, you have blown me away. You have blown me away. It has been an honor to be here with you all. Again, our last conversation is coming up. Thank you all again, the audience, for staying with us, being so engaged, laughing at my ridiculous jokes, uh, clapping when I sang Patti LaBelle. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, and last but not least, establishing a brand is about establishing a place and a purpose in culture at large. No one has accomplished this better than Tremaine Emery. He literally stuck a flag in the culture with his Tyson Beckford sweater, substituting a version of artist David Hammond's untitled for the American flag in the classic Ralph Lauren knit, a piece so powerful that it's currently on loan to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Tremaine has collaborated with Frank Ocean and the late Virgil Abloh and brands like Levi's and Ugg and he's not afraid to use the cultural cachet he's earned for the greater good. As he showed when he pressured his partner, Nike, to show support for the 2020 Black Lives Matter protests. Now, due to unforeseen circumstances, we are welcoming Tremaine on a pre-recorded video conversation with founder and CEO of the Karen Harvey Companies, our host of this incredible day, Karen Harvey. Please. Check out the video and their conversation. And thank you again for having me today. Hi, Tremaine. Hey, what's up, Beb? How you doing, my friend? I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. I'm I'm just sitting here feeling incredibly grateful that you're doing this with us this morning. I really wish you were here in person, but it was my dream and my vision to have you with us here at FTF this year and you made it happen. So thank you so much and so glad to see you looking so well, man. I actually think where I want to start this conversation is really about you. You know, the man before the brand and your journey into the world of fashion. How did you navigate everything from the beginning? I think I, I've always been into style, always been into art and it all started I guess with my mom and dad and the way they live life and the things they exposed me to growing, raising me and my brothers in New York, just New York in general is just like, you know, it's one of the people look great, you know? And it's like, um, people care about what they wear and express themselves through style. That's the first, uh, my first fashion school was growing up in New York and in Queens and then, you know, going to the city and stuff on weekends with my parents and then magazines and stuff and books and my dad's books and film too. For me, I was always, I love film. My parents owned a video store. And um, I think one of the things I picked up in film wasn't just the story or the whatever, it was the style in the films, whether it be like, you know, um, black exploitation films, uh, Woody Allen films, Scorsese films, Spike Lee films, um, you know, John Cassavetes, uh, you know, David Lynch, all different directors and auteurs, but the style and all these films were incredible. So I feel like that was another fashion style school for me was, you know, watching so many films. You know, then as I got older, just you develop your own style and, just, you know, start hanging out on my own, start making a little bit of money. I remember my first check, I was working at FedEx, loading the trucks, loading the trucks at night after going to college at LaGuardia. And my first check, I went and 
Not even my first check, my first credit card, to be honest. <laughs> I went to the Gucci store in 1999 and bought my mom like a... Um, that's when Tom Ford was there. I bought her like a nylon Jackie O bag, you know? That's probably the first fashion purchase of that love I made was just bought a bag for my mom. Because, yeah, I just wanted to hook her up. And then anyway, and then... Going on, I got re start working retail. Worked at J Crew as a sales associate. Left that spot, then worked at uh, Bergdorf as a stock guy. Um, then I worked at Kate Spade as a stock guy. Then I started at Mark Jacobs um, as a stock guy. Mark Jacobs was a place that I always went to. I always checked out the clothes, and it was a dream. It was a dr at that time it was a dream job, and I I lucked up and I, I got a, I got a gig there. And then at the same time, I was hanging out at Union. Um, I, you know, I discovered Union just by walking by it. I would hang out there all the time, and um, I was a Union rat. And then, you know, then it was like Stussy and Supreme and that whole world downtown and Sir and all those stores. Um, you know, anything. There's so many different Nort, different stores and stuff like that. And then um, that was my education. And then working at Mark Jacobs for nine years was a huge education between working in the West Village to Robert Robert and Mark moving me to London. Me getting to the fashion world was kind of through the life I, I lived and I didn't even, it wasn't a choice. It was um, more so, I guess, just being a kid growing up in New York and being a mix of growing up in New York and being curious, you know? Yeah, I think that curiosity is, is really everything. Yeah. And then, um, London, you know, met some amazing people. Met A-Side, who's a great friend and business partner. We started No Vacancy Inn together. David Sinatra and Fraser A.V. David's the CEO of Stussy, and um, Fraser's the brand director. And um, I guess that was like my first fashion job where I did design, um, where I was doing design, but also marketing and music stuff with them. But I have to also connect that to Mark Jacobs because I met those guys in London and I would not have met them in London if it wasn't for, you know, Robert Duffy and Mark moving me there and then, um, and giving me a job, you know, having me having a job to sustain myself and a job that had me around all of it, you know? Um, and then, you know, I met Serge Becker who isn't in fashion, the places that he creates attract people with style, attract fat, attract all the things that I work with, attract musicians. So he had a place called uh, La Bodega Negra, and I became the social director for there. And then, um, yeah, me and Asar were doing parties there and events and stuff like that. And like, even that, you know, like, let's example, I did the first party, me and Asar did the first party ever for, for Imran at Business, for Business of Fashion. We did the first party for him with Tom Ford, you know? So it's just a party, but you build relationships through just being you. And that's what I've always done. I've, I've built relationships accidentally, you know? You know, I just did a collaboration with um, Kim Jones and Dior. But I, I, know, I met Kim through my friend that worked at Mark Jacobs that used to model for him back in 2006. The, the road is super, it's just, the road's just been me being me and me being curious and me having genuine relationship with people. I think that's the three, three things, you know, um, you know, and hard work. It, it's really incredible. I, and yes, the hard work, of course, but it's so apropos for Fashion Tech Forum because really we've been talking about community since last night when Patti LaBelle joined us for an incredible performance and and the room, the energy, the flow was so powerful. And, you know, I really see us bringing that into today with this incredible conversation with you. And I'm learning things I actually didn't know before. So thank you for that. Tremaine, how did Denim Tears come about? Uh, it's so funny. Um far as the name, the name started years before the brand. Um, me, Virgil, Abla, Samuel Ross, Benji B, Tyus Pawson, and A-Side, we were at a dinner before a gig. 
we had a gig at this place called the uh, um, Basement at the Edition Hotel when it first opened up in London. And this guy, Seb Chu, used to throw parties there. He's an um, amazing DJ and a the a &R. Yeah, we're at dinner, and it just started as an inside joke about a pair of jeans, ripped up Levi a pair of rip ripped up Levi's that I had posted on Instagram. And um, the back pocket kind of looked like a ripped up heart, whatever. The guys are basically roasting me, cracking jokes. And then um, V Virgil or A like A side Virgil Caius, someone said denim something. Denim was crying, denim tears, and I just said oh, that's a good name. So then the next day, Virgil had a um, he used to have a blog on Style.com for his travels, and um, he wrote he was just like oh you know had a dinner and then an amazing party. Kais Pawson of Young Turks fame, they're now called Turks. Benji B of BBC Radio and Deviation. A side of marketing, Nike Marketing and The Shining, which was the band he was in. And then he goes, and Denim Tears of Mark Jacobs fame. And I just thought it was so, it was like an inside joke, you know, that he put that in that. No one knew what that meant, but us, the five of us. And that kind of goes back to the community thing you're talking about. Uh, the tribe community and like, yeah. So that's how I started. So then from that day forward, I whenever me and Asai would do parties or anything like that, the hand the handle would be denim tears. I remember the first time I used the handle was like a this party I did with Frank Frank Ocean for um uh, the video Nikes. We did a part of there's a party scene in the video Nikes. So we actually threw a real party, um, and I put that. Me and we put together the all the people there and A side DJ'd and um bo uh bromance guys DJ'd and then yeah I remember like we we're going back on the back and forth on the flyer and then I was like did them tears and Frank was like yeah I like that so that was just like the name stuck so going forward no vacancy starts but then I would do like charity this charity thing I work with uh, Christy Charlton and her charity Every Mill Accounts yes. So, yep. which is an amazing charity. And um, I would do like a kind of like this bake sale and t shirt sale every year. And I do it under the name Tim Denim Tears. And then with my little, my younger brother Torn. And then I moved back from London to America. And I was working with Ye at Yeezy. And then after I got let go from that job in like the winter of 2018, I just was like, you know, I don't know. It was a mix of like, like the feeling of being back in America and everything that was going on in America. Trump winning, uh, just, uh, just the state of things in America and me being out of America for seven years. It really made me think differently about how I felt as an African-American in America and African-American in the Western world. And so, yeah, I just, I was like thinking, I was like, I'm not getting out all my ideas with Stussy and No Vacancy and the consultancies I'm doing. And there's these specific ideas I want to get out and stories I wanted to tell. And it's really inspired, Dinners is heavily inspired by like Wells Bonner, Martine Rose, Supreme, you know, like Supreme would do once in a blue, would they would do like Martin Luther King hoodie or Malcolm X hoodie or things like that. And I was like, well, what if there was a brand that told stories even deeper? We always hear about Malcolm X and Harriet Tubman and, and they're amazing, incredible um, activists and stories in America. So I was like, what if I told other stories that aren't really spoken about or taught? And do it, you know, do it in the in the format of clothing and make it very submersive. And um that's kind of that's how I started Dim Tears. And um It's so inspiring, Tremaine, and to put that activism, the legacy of it and the heart of it to the center of the brand. And it comes through, you know, through your voice, and I think the voices of your community today and bringing that legacy forward. So, sorry I interrupted you. I just got excited. <laughs>
No, and you know what? I think a lot about something both you and James W. has said about Denim Tears. I remember when me and you first were meeting, you're like, you went by my pop. Remember we first met in front of the pop-up I did. And the product was so amazing. Exactly. And you, and that made me so happy because that was another part of it too, was to tell these stories, but then back it up with amazing design and product and quality. You know, and that's something James has said too. He's like, he's like yeah, your stories are amazing and it's cool. But he's like, it's cool and a, it's great quality, you know, so. The quality blew my mind. I still think about it today and, and wear it today, oh, by the way. Amazing. So, yeah, that was, that's, that's, that's how I started, you know, did them tears, you know, and like, um, yeah, it's been, it's fun. It's been a lot of fun and I'm really grateful for that people, seems people love it. You know me, I could talk to you for hours. So. Yes, we've done it many a time. <laughs> well, I, 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 I guess the thing that I would really love to bring this to is, it's sort of a full circle for you and really hearing this story about you originally meeting James and Union and here you are today, um, right at the center as the creative director for Supreme and, and also at a moment where, I mean, VF acquiring a brand like Supreme was really a huge moment. And, and I love hearing everything that you've said to us to this moment. How do you think about going forward and bringing this incredible personal history, plus the history that came before you into Supreme going forward? And of course, continuing to drive culture, relevancy, passion, and a love of product? Yeah, great question. Um, I'm just, I'm just there to do my best and work with the amazing team that, um, you know, James has put together and that we continue to add on to. And, you know, he's still, that James is still in the office working with him and Aaron and Nick and everyone there. And, um, my main thing is Supreme's a New York brand, you know? So like, Didum Tears, the muse is like the African diaspora and the muse for Supreme, the, the muse for Supreme is New York and it's a New York brand. And there's so many stories and feelings and um, to put, to draw from New York and also how New York has influenced the world and put it into clothing, you know? And um, I want to carry on tradition, but also, push it forward and um, keep making uh, clothing that is meaningful to to young people, to subculture, to culture, and to um, people, people who care about quality, well-made clothing that comes from a band, brand that means something. So just really can continue in what James has been doing for 30 years. And, you know, he, it's, um, it's absolute honor to be there working with him and, and, and everyone in there. And uh, it's fun. And um, yeah, I, I hope everyone likes the stuff that's been coming out that, that we're doing together and that we're going to continue to to put out. I, I can't wait to see the progress. And of course, you know me, the clothes. But more than anything, Tremaine, it's genuinely an honor to have you with me today and with all of us at Fashion Tech Forum. And I cannot thank you enough. There are no words uh, for you making the time for us today. Yeah, um, again, my pleasure and congrats on all of it. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be watching. Um, I wish I could have been there in the flesh. I'll be there next year in the flesh, but thanks for having me none, uh, nonetheless. You better be, and I'm holding you to I that, I know you friend. will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Ah, uh, you too. He's so amazing. Wow, that was such a wonderful way to close. Uh, thank you for those of you who have been here since the beginning. Wow. It, I know it's been an incredibly long day and so grateful um, that you're still with us and I hope you've been inspired. Honestly, hi, Diana. <laughs> I've been wanting to say hello to you all day. Um, seriously, I have so many people to thank. 
uh, not the least of which is my co-founder, Maya Wojcik, and it really is, she is so extraordinary. Honestly, she is so extraordinary. And those of you who know me know that there is no really this or me in this world of this without Maya. So you choke me up every day. Thank you so much. Where are you, Jenna? Where is she? There she is. Um, Jenna Blaha and I met about 10 years ago, and it was at, so interesting, 2017 when Angela was with us and a couple of other people here in the room, Jenna was backstage, and it was sort of like the same problem today where sometimes what was happening in backstage was like the other show and things were going on, and I remember looking at Jenna and we were talking throughout the day, and I looked at someone on the team. Maya was actually having a baby at the time, literally, like almost at that moment. But I turned to somebody and I said, one of these days, that woman's going to work with me. And I have been grateful ever since. So thank you so much, Jenna. You have curated, you have done it all. Thank you so much. And of course, my teams from KHC and from Index are all here and just extraordinary women. We are all women working together every single day. Again, none of this happens without them. So you guys, all of you, wherever you are, thank you, thank you, thank you, Natasha. She puts up with me every single day, morning, noon, and night. But mostly, the people who are here today sharing their stories and sharing their vision and putting it out there wholeheartedly, they're really the ones. What's always inspired me is being behind the scenes, actually. You know, I'm, I'm really here, I really exist to make other people great. It's what I love to do, it's what I was born to do, and it's such an honor to give a platform to such incredibly powerful people who are equally humble and equally inquisitive. So to all of you, some of you who are still here, thank you. I think it was Lola who said, to have a dame of the British Empire in the same room as Nigel, like something's really working around here, right? So. Thank you all so very much. Lola Oganaki. This almost didn't happen, so I called Lola. I had the whole team on Zoom. We were sort of commiserating something, and I said, I got to get Lola back. That's it. So I called Lola, and she was in Lagos, literally. She picked up the phone. She's like, hello? And not like, she said, hello. And I said, I need you. And she said, I'll pack my bags, I'm on my way. So thank you, Lola, you are so brilliant. I'm just so grateful. <laughs> Sitting up here in the beautiful denim skirt and black top is Dana Stupnik Guidoni. And Dana is our, a publicist working with us just starting this year. And Dana, you're brilliant, your heart, your full everything. I thank you so, so very, very much. Thank you. And then there's NASDAQ. I mean, really, the support, the opportunity to have this platform uh, on so, you know, we have a community prior to NASDAQ of 30,000 pretty engaged people and we're, we've been pretty proud of that built very much on our own, with very much startup budgets, and you know, this was just a whole new level for us. And so I'm extremely grateful. Kristen and her production team are amazing. Allison's team, fantastic. Sahar and her team, just amazing. Maya, did I leave anyone out? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, good, just checking. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. We have drinks and we have food and we have Bobby Hundred's book in a gift bag for you in the cafe. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, thank you.